Of the many improved features in Photoshop over the years, Photoshop's panoramic creation tool, Photo Merge, maybe is one of the most improved. So let's learn how to create a panoramic image in Photoshop right now. So creating a panoramic image like this uh, begins really with shooting the photos. You want to go out, set up a leveled tripod and take a large or hefty series of photos. We can check and see what I have here. I've got 11 JPEG images here that I've shot. And if you don't want to go out and shoot your own panoramic image, that's fine. You can download these JPEG images. There's a link in the description to this video uh, that you can use and follow right along with this tutorial. So let's go back to Photoshop and here's what we're going to do. We're going to go File, Automate, and choose Photo Merge. Now here in Photo Merge, the first thing we do is load in our images. So we do that by hitting the Browse button. And right here, I can choose these JPEGs, Pano 1, and hold down my Shift key and select Pano 11, and then hit OK, and it's going to import them into this dialog box. Almost always, I'm going to use the Auto Layout. Adobe and Photoshop have made this very, very powerful virtually all the time I'm using the auto layout. Uh, then you have some other vignette removal and geometric distortion correction options. Uh, maybe if you're using an ultra wide angle lens and by ultra wide angle I mean kind of like 24 millimeters on a full frame lens or wider depending on uh, how good the lens is you may have vignetting and distortion issues that need to be corrected just something to keep in mind. Then we go ahead and hit OK and it's going to create the panoramic image by stitching these JPEG images together. Normally I would be using raw images and these JPEGs did come from raw images, but raw images take a very, very long time to stitch together. So for the sake of time, I'm using JPEGs. And here, as you can see, we have our panoramic image stitched together. It looks like there are a bunch of cracks and things. That's really just the way Photoshop's displaying it at, you know, whatever it is, 12.5% or whatever it's showing it to us. Yeah, 12.5%. The first thing we're going to do is go ahead and rotate and crop this image. So grab the crop tool. And one thing, maybe you'll want to go to view and make sure snapping is not turned on. That can be helpful for very little crops. And I'm just dragging these edges up and moving them in. Um, just kind of like so. Maybe I'll rotate this whole thing just a smidgen. Uh, I don't mind if I have to fill the corners of the sky. That's not too bad. Maybe I'll boost the bottom here just so I don't quite have uh, as much filling on the bottom. There we go. And just hit the little check icon to commit those changes. It's going to crop the image in just a second. All right, great. So we have to crop. We have a cropped image, and you can see we have little areas in the corners that we need to fill in. This is pretty easy to fill this stuff in. You can use Content Aware Fill, or you could use the Healing Brush. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use Content Aware Fill. So the way we're going to do that is merge all of our layers to one new layer by hitting Control Shift Alt or Command Shift Option E. You're going to see boom, a new layer. Now what I'm going to do is grab my lasso tool and just select this whole corner and uh, short or small disclaimer, I should say, uh, content aware fill can be very hit or miss. So we're going to go edit, fill, and we're going to choose the contents to be content aware and hit OK. And there we go. Filled that in. Not too bad. Needs a little bit of touching up. We're not going to spend too much time on it. We're going to do the same thing here with this corner of the sky. This should be much easier for content aware fill to fill in. Uh, but hey, we'll see. Uh, not bad. Uh, and the same thing over here with the other corner. And basically, you know, you just go over any areas like this. Usually it's just going to be your corners and fill them using content aware fill. Great. And then last but not least down here, this one is uh, should be a, uh, a walk in the park. Great. So there we go. And the last thing that I would do is go over the whole image with a fine tooth comb. You can see all these little specks and dots. This is because I shot the image at an aperture of f22. So every single little thing full, full uh, Full foreground, I should say, full background is in sharp focus. Um, and these are all just like little dots and smudges on the sensor of the camera I was using. And as you can see, it is positively filthy. So I would clean these up by using the healing brush tool, holding down my alter option key and just sampling and painting over these and going over that as it needs uh, to be corrected and cleaned up. And the other thing you want to watch for is sometimes if you see little lines and things uh, where Photoshop may have stitched your images together, you can use the healing brush as well to clean that stuff up or even if you want to take a tire track out of the road. So that is it. That is how you create a panoramic image in Photoshop. It's quick, it's easy, and Photoshop is making it uh, more and more robust with every release, this photo merge option. Something you should definitely check out if you've never shot a panoramic image. Get out there and try it. It's super fun, and you can have a lot of really cool images um, that you have to work with. That's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for sticking around and watching. Make sure you go check out tutvid.com for more free Photoshop tutorials. Hey, wait, stop. Before you click away from this video, I just want to remind you, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit that little like button. It helps this video go up, and going up is what I like. That's what we want to do. If you also have a couple more seconds, go ahead and leave a comment. That's cool, too. That's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, check out either of these two videos right here for more of the stuff that I do. This hand is weird. 
right there. Thanks, guys.